Welcome to the Synapse Podcast. My name is Dave Vans, and I have with me... Matt Gardner, Certified Financial Planner and CEO, Chief Education Officer and founder of Finlit Tech. I am an author as well, uh, fortunate to spend 20 plus years in the financial services industry. As I said, I'm a certified financial planner, had my own uh, wealth management practice, but started writing books because in my years in this business, working with very wealthy people, helping do financial plans, but then saw that folks weren't very financially literate. And so my first book is titled Motivate Your Money, I wrote it for adults, just to provide Mac nuggets or simplifying financial concepts, investing, insurance, so on and so forth. And then one of my clients came to me, said, Mac, love what you're doing for adults. Would you be open to creating something for children? And so that's when I wrote a book called The Four Money Bears. And The Four Money Bears is a book that I wrote to help parents with young children, sort of K through five, start the conversation about money. So the idea is there's only four things you can do with money. Spend it, save it, invest it, or give it away. So I created these four beers, spender beer, saver beer, investor beer, and giver beer, so that a parent can sit down with a child and when you're going to the grocery store or you're going to the store, I have kids, the first place they run off to is the toy aisle. We wanted to have something where a parent can sit down with a child and say, hey, you've got some options. You don't just blow all your money when you get it. You can actually spend it, save it, invest it, or give it away. So the other side of the book is how Finlit Tech got created. So we had folks that say, Mac, I love the book. Uh, we are so blessed. We have global book sales. People from around the world turn to the Four Money Bears to start that conversation. But common ask that we would get is, hey, can you create a, 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 a game or an app or some sort of digital platform? Because our children are spending so much time, we talked about that, on digital devices and are, are learning through digital platforms. And so we started Finlit Tech, uh, which stands for Financial Literacy Technology. And the purpose of it is to build a bridge between financial literacy and financial technology. There's tons of tech out there to help you do things with your money. Banking, investing, savings, insurance. You can, you can pull up my phone and I can do all that. But there's very little tech to help teach you what to do with money. And that's our mission is to, uh, to build platforms multimedia, digital platforms, gamify the uh, financial education process. Backing up, yep. you said someone came up to you and said, why don't you do this for, for kids, like teaching, teaching kids. Were you taught as a kid? Was this something that you grew up and you were aware of, you just were unaware of that? Like, how does that play into your background? So I, I'm blessed. I believe that all we are at the end of our days are collection of stories, literally. We, we go through life and we hear and we share stories. Some of us are fortunate to live in a home that the story of what a stock is, or what a bond is, or what your balance sheet, or what's your income statement. So my dad went to Howard University for his undergrad, got his MBA from NYU, was in banking, was a bank executive for years. So I was fortunate to get those stories about balance sheet and income statement and leverage. And so I think that has sort of filtered into me and maybe a the reason why I am on this path <laughs> to deal with personal finance, but there were stories that I heard. I think it may have shaped my path to be in this finance space, and then it really opened my eyes to how many people aren't getting this story. And so we believe it's important to start the conversation early, because the earlier we can start these stories and having conversations with kids about money and how to manage it, the better off they'll be long term. To start the conversation early, because the earlier we can start these stories and having conversations with kids about money and how to manage it, the better off they'll be long term. I love it. I was not taught about money growing up. Like we didn't talk about financial management or anything like that. So you're kind of left trying to figure that out as you go. I have a I have a son who got into stocks in high school on his own. Just started studying, started looking into it. He's, he's drawn to that. Um, but what's fascinating is when they were younger. I didn't have we didn't have a book. Four bears, or four financial bears. <laughs> like we didn't have anything like that, but I, I did not want them to lose out on understanding how to, like, what it's like to make money, mm -hmm. right? When they came to me for an allowance, I said, rather than me giving you money, you need to figure out how to make it. And yeah. it started with doing muffins. So they would, they'd go to Costco, we'd buy those big muffins. You ever seen those yeah. big blueberry oh, yeah, muffins? Yeah, they're huge, massive. Then we'd go to somewhere else and buy these little cellophane bags and they would repackage each individual one, they came up with the price point, and then they would go out and sell them. But I bought the muffins, I bought the bag, and I made them keep a P&L sheet. <laughs> oh, I love that. 
and they had to pay me back. So they had to go out and sell. Mm -hmm. And one of the most powerful moments that I had, it was here in Florida, you know how hot it gets. Mm -hmm. It's like 105 degrees. It was one of the hottest days of summer. Mm -hmm. And just the humidity was killer. They took off. We have a golf cart that we drive around in our community. They went out in the golf cart and I had my older son drive my youngest one around. Mm -hmm. Now my youngest one, he's, they're, they're two very polar opposite children. My older one's like, I'm like, just make sure he doesn't go in someone's house. You know, like make sure no one invites him in and he, and he walks <laughs> in. Card. You know, but you let him go to the door because a lot of this is not about him making money. For me, it's about how to manage it, but also how to communicate, tell people what you want. It, there's like a lot of different learning skills. He called me up after an, uh, an hour. And now mind you, he had sold some the day before. He did really great. Sold out like a dozen of them within like 15 minutes. Yeah. So he said, give me two dozen. I said, okay. And then as I was picking them up, he said, you know what, give me three dozen. I go, I don't know if you want. And he said, oh, just do it. So after an hour, he calls up, he sold one. Mm -hmm. And I said, you can come home. I didn't want them dying out in the heat, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He never came home. And I trust my oldest son had, had it all taken care of. They came home an hour and a half later after that, sold them all. He decided, he goes, I'm not going home until I sold the last one. Yeah. And I was proud of him for that moment because sure. I gave him the out. Yeah, you know. Yeah, know. So talk a little bit about that book about the kids and like what you've seen and how it's impacted people. So I talk about, especially when it comes to money, and I love your story. Again, all we are in life, collection of stories. I talk about the three R's of our relationship with money, and this is actually our relationship with anything in life. The first R is we realize what money is. So somebody drops a piece of paper in your hand and says, "Hey, this is money." Oh, okay, money, great. The second R is you recognize what money does, all right? So for most young people, if you were never taught what those four options of money are, I do this thing called the $100 bill challenge. I, I, I go to schools, I take a $100 bill up, and I'll say, okay, if I gave you this $100 bill, what would you do with it? Of course, hands start flying up. Oh, I'd buy this, or I'd buy that. Da, da, da. And I would do that so many times, and you know what I found? It was almost an experiment children are conditioned to consume at a very early age. Nine out of 10 kids would spend that. So for most young people, their recognition of the function of money is to spend it or save it. Spend it or put in a piggy bank. What's but more fun? Yeah, but remember, there's four functions to money. So here, so you realize what money is, you recognize what it does, then you start rationalizing how to use it. If your only awareness of the functions of money is twofold, you're limited in your rationalization of how to use it. If all of a sudden says, someone says, hey, you know what, you can spend that, you can save it, you can, instead of buying those Nikes or whatever, Starbucks, you can actually invest in that company and own that company. Or you can give that money to someone in need or organization in need. Imagine now that awareness has expanded to fourfold how you can now recognize and then rationalize what money is done. And so in your son's situation, there's uh, what I call two sides of the personal finance fence. And this is what the game that we're developing is gonna be, we're gonna be releasing, helps young people to understand. The first side of that fence is how is money made? That's through entrepreneurship. So our game, you run a berry farm. You own, you inherit your family's berry farm and you have to run this farm, that's your business. The other side of that fence is now that you have the money, how do you manage the money? And that's where those four money beers come into play to help the user understand that you actually have four functions. And when that money comes into your home, or it comes into your purse, or it comes into your wallet, these are the functions. It's not just spending, it's not just saving, but you can invest back in your business or you can give to the community. So I think that's why it's so important to start this early. Interesting stat, a lot of people don't know this. 15 states currently, provide financial literacy or require financial literacy to, re, to, to, to graduate from high school. So 15 states currently. A study shows that a child's connectivity with money starts by age seven. So children are picking up the habits of their parents and the older people in their, in, their, in their lives from age five, six, seven. So if you're not required to get it till your senior year in high school, you're 17, 18, but it starts at seven, eight, that's a 10 year gap. Right? And there may not be a parent that thinks the way we do and wants to give our kids the, uh, the opportunity with money and happens to be a CFP or happens to be in this type of business. So that's why we think it's important to start that process early, give them the experience, give them that recognition, 
of what money can do for them so that they have that long track record and that long runway to do things with money. Where are you from? <laughs> uh, that, that, that's a fascinating question. So, born in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. uh, parents are from the Caribbean. My dad is from Antigua, my mom is from Haiti, and grew up in D.C., grew up in the Caribbean, spent some time in the Bronx, in New York, which is why to this day I'm a diehard New York Giants fan and a New York Yankees fan. Uh, then moved to Florida, went to University of Maryland for college, Houston, so been fortunate, moved around, experienced a lot of different places. And now you're here? Now we're here, so got married in 05, had our first two kiddos, had the third one in Houston, and a lot of the families either in South Florida uh, or back home in Antigua. And so moved to uh, Tampa in 2016, started getting involved with the Tampa community, started getting involved with Synapse, which is why we're sitting here today, is, is my involvement with Synapse at early stage. Let's talk about that for a little bit. Sure. Synapse, first event time, the first time coming here? No, um, actually second time in person because we had a virtual one, so this is definitely my, my, my third one. Only all Tampa, or did you go to the one in Orlando? Have you done it? I uh, have not been to the one in Orlando. So what happened was I, um, I was working in the financial service industry. I was talking to, interestingly enough, Ian Anderson, who is uh, who runs Tampa Bay Business Journal. I was talking to Ian. We're having lunch, and I showed him my book. And he said, "Mac, this book is great." I said, "Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'd like to be able to develop an app of some sort. You know, really to, to scale it and get it out to more people and under underserved, uh, you know, overlooked communities." And he said, "Well." Do you know Brian Kornfeld? I was like, no, should I? He said, you might want to reach out to Brian. So I had lunch with Brian. I said, hey, Brian, I wrote this book. He has young children, too. He flipped through the book. He said, Mac, this is awesome. But how can I help? So I'd like to develop an app or do something. He said, well, we do these things called Synapse Challenges. We go out to the community, and we ask them to develop and create things that can help the community. So in 2019, we were a Synapse Challenge for, for Synapse. And then COVID came, and then the whole world fell apart and all the different things. But that's what started the journey with Synapse. I met with Lauren, met with Brian, told them what our vision was. And then that evolved into Mac. We would like to grow the diversity, equity, and inclusion aspect of Synapse. We'd like to get more people, more women, more people from different backgrounds. So they asked me to join the Impact Board. I gladly did. And then uh, I, I got involved last year. I did a few uh, speaking engagements and panels. And uh, we launched our app last year at Synapse. And we started working with uh, Skyway, uh, Skyway Capital. Skyway heard about what we're doing, Jeff and, and Russ Hunt. And so now we're at a very amazing place where this idea, this book that I wrote five, six years ago, is now being developed into an app and we have the support of the whole Tampa Bay innovation community to help uh, help make it uh, from dream to reality. What is it about Synapse do you feel that is different, that um, why it matters so much, why people you know come to it? What do, you, what do you think that this delivers that maybe other conferences don't? There is a, and it may, it's, it's hard to put words to it. This is the sort of feeling inside. The first word that comes to my mind when I think about the Synapse feel is a feel of genuineness. Just folks are genuinely interested in what you have to say. Folks are genuinely interested in your success and trying to put you in connection with the right people to take your idea, your venture, to a place that you probably wouldn't even think uh, it, it goes. So that's one of the things that I think about when I think about the Synapse community, the event. There's a it's a great energy. Folks are folks are are, 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 are anticipating what's coming next. So I think a, a genuine concern and feel for the success of everyone who comes in some way, shape, or form to be successful is is, is what stands out the most for me. Well, Matt, I appreciate you being here, oh, and sharing I, I, your story. Thank you, thank you. That I was, appreciate the, I, I yeah. love it. I want to check out the book. I can't wait to hear more about. Is it an app? That's it's an app. So that's yes. Coming? So um, the, the book is called The Four Money Bears. Uh, like everything, you can find it on Amazon. Uh, okay. The game that we're developing is called The Four Money Bears Berryville. You can actually go on and download the demo now uh, on Apple or uh, on Android. And our game plan, we're developing it right now. We're actually in the process of uh, raising funds 
it's, it's, it is a tough time. You know, FinTech had a lot of shine last year and some of that shine is, is, is going to the wayside, but we have some great supporters here and we are in the process of getting things lined up for release quarter three of this year. Uh, we're working with Junior Achievement Tampa Bay. They're going to be the first Junior Achievement in the country to utilize the Four Money Bears Berryville uh, I, for their children. If you would have said you were in Orlando, I would have connected you. My wife is the Director of Philanthropy at Junior Achievement Orlando. But she sticks to Orlando, obviously. So Well, well, well that's the great thing. I, I did a post uh, a few months ago talking about you know the partnership with JA Tampa and we had four other junior achievements reached out and said we want the four money bears here we uh, in Austin Atlanta uh, Georgia so we we have very close relationships with JA Orlando the idea is to get it out to all the junior achievements to get it out through financial services institutions um, really three channels we'd like to really impact one is direct to consumer. If you have a young person that's spending an inordinate amount of time on an electronic device playing games, why not play Berryville, learn a little bit about money. Um, second is going to be financial institutions. So if you're a bank or a credit union and you want to uh, promote more financial literacy, more financial education at an early age, you can use our game. And then third, teachers. I can't tell you how many teachers out there really want to be able to teach kids at elementary school and give them a fun, we call financial literacy platform where a kid doesn't really realize they're learning about money, but they are learning about money. So that's those are the three uh, the three lanes we're really making to make a make an impact. Well, what I love about it is you're solving a problem that's that's not uncommon. There's a lot of us that grew up and people just didn't talk about money, and when you when you don't have that experience, it's oftentimes difficult to know where to start. And so by giving them the opportunity to have a platform to start with, it makes it easier. So that's Great. awesome, man. Good conversations, good stories. Yes. I'll, I'll share one other thing. Someone asked me, you know, Mac, long term, where do you see the impact, you know? And we would love to be able to create a tool that teaches financial literacy, right? <clears throat> analyzes what the user's doing and, and looking at the, uh, the behavioral aspects of, of finance because a lot of what we do with our money comes from the things that we see in our, in our homes and our communities, right? And then track that progress over time. So imagine a child in an underserved, overlooked community all of a sudden playing a game and, you know, having a fun time, learning about these four beers, what to do with money, and then the impact it then makes in that home, in that neighborhood, in that community. That's what we're really looking to see is, is, is the, the long-term impact that starting the conversations early will have in communities that never really got a chance. So, thank you so much for having me. This has been awesome. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate you sharing the story. Yeah.